Good morning and welcome. I am Liam Mulvey, a student of the Australian Catholic University Strathfield, and I'm here to talk to you today about the proposed intervention of increasing tax thresholds on sugar sweetened beverages, or SSBs as I refer to them, in order to reduce obesity rates in Australia. According to the World Health Organization, being overweight or obese is defined as having abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. Obesity is a worldwide epidemic, with Australia facing its fair share of the obesity plague. In a report across the 2014-15 period, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare reported that approximately 63% of the adult population were overweight or obese, with close to 5 million Australians being obese. One in four children under the age of 17 were also reported as being obese. A large contributor to this epidemic is the increased intake of sugar-sweetened beverages post World War II, and more recently across the past 30 to 40 years with the increased prevalence of Coca-Cola, a major driver in the SSB beverage market. This idea is explored by a paper published by Malik and Associates through the US National Library of Medicine, where evidence-based research indicates SSB intake tracks positively with the rising rates of obesity. As an influence of the change, a proposed theory to reduce SSB intake and therefore attempt to reduce a major risk factor contributing to obesity is to introduce a higher government tax upon SSBs. Many political and educational bodies within Australia, such as the Greens Party and multiple universities, are in favour of introducing a higher tax on SSBs. As a result, consumers serve an economical disadvantage and are hopefully deterred from buying the SSB as they are forced to pay more for the goods a supplier must charge more as a result of the higher tax. As a result of this intervention, as explored by Stephen Duckett and Hal Swerson in an article published by the Grattan Institute titled A Sugary Drinks Tax, increasing tax would potentially generate up to $500 million in annual revenue, both through tax and the reduced burden of obesity on the Australian healthcare system. Within this article, Duckett and co explore the idea that by increasing tax to 40 cents per 100 grams of sugar, the price of a two litre bottle of soft drink could approximately be rise by 80 cents. This could potentially target the lower socioeconomic classes who experience higher rates of SSB intake by making the goods more expensive. Han and Powell, in a paper titled Consumption Patterns of Sugar Sweetened Beverages in the US, highlight this fact that people of lower socioeconomic class tend to exhibit higher levels of SSB intake. This is majorly due to poor dietary and health education and easy access to cheap and poor nutritional value foods and drinks. An article titled The Growing Cost of Obesity 2008 published by Access Economics reports that, and I quote, it is estimated that in Australia obesity causes 23.8% of type 2 diabetes, 21.3% of cardiovascular disease, 24.5% of osteoarthritis, and 20.5% of colorectal, breast, uterine, and kidney cancers. By reducing intake within the targeted classes of the lower socioeconomic demographic, the burden of healthcare on the government will be significantly re reduced, allowing allocation of funding to change, with more money being put into educational campaigns and programs, as well as other health promotional initiatives, to increase the healthy eating habits of the lower socioeconomic classes, and targeting the risk factors that result in obesity. By introducing higher tax, the government would be taking a stance on obesity within, the, within Australia, promoting prevention rather than treatment. By educating people on the deter determinants of their own health, you give people a choice and therefore they can ultimately create their own healthy lifestyle. Overall, the targeted top population groups of this intervention will experience greater levels of physiological health with the reduced likeliness of obesity, type 2 diabetes, some cancers and other forms of sickness and disease, removing multiple risk factors to longevity and poor health. As explored by Hill in how obesity relates to socio-economic status, health inequities may be positively benefited through assisting lower socio-economic status people in Australia. Evidence suggests in developed countries, people with higher levels of education are more informed of healthy eating habits and have relatively easy access to good decision-making practices. Therefore, by providing health promotion initiatives and educational programs, lower socio-economic classes will be given the opportunity to remove their own inequities. Financial barriers to the lower socio-economic classes will be removed due to the greater revenue from the higher tax, 
allowing for these programs and initiatives to be set up within communities at no cost to the individuals, overall greatly reducing health inequities. This idea is further explored within a paper published by the World Health Organization titled Obesity and Inequities. People who are overweight or obese, mainly due to their lower socioeconomic status and resulting poor health decision-making practices and resulting SSB intake, not only suffer the physiological effects of being unhealthily large, but they also experience higher rates of discrimination, bullying and social exclusion, which leads to lower self-esteem and overall psychological problems. So therefore, by introducing, introducing higher tax thresholds on SSBs, funding and education can assist these people in not only overcoming their physical problem, but also their overall health, including both the social and emotional aspects, removing, removing major health inequities in terms of obesity prevention. Hopefully this tax will be implemented into the Australian Government policy as to change the health outcomes and inequities of so many Australians. Thank you.